it's nothing new But it's so good to see you We do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you Good morning, everybody. You've seen us eat, get some yummy breakfast and get things situated for the day. Uh, Will has the girls upstairs and we're gonna start school. Today we are taking you in a, a day in our life. Our neighbors are getting their roof repaired and I totally forgot about that until just this minute. So they're, oh no wait, that's not the roof. That's not the roofers. That might be a street cleaner. That might be the, what that is. Anyway, we live like not a super busy place, but our street gets a lot of traffic. So there's always some noise. So if you hear that, sorry, there might be a lot of um, voiceovers in this, but we did want to take you on a school day routine with us really quick. You did see kind of our morning routine. Um, it, nothing's really changed, but we're starting a new week. So we figured we'd show you and some of Parker's ways of, that he's remembering all of the states that we've learned, right? You want to show him your, your new way to remember those? Um, What's the capital of Delaware? Dover. Dover. How do you remember that? Dover. Do Dover, Delaware. Okay, what about Pennsylvania? Pens Don't forget that it's over there. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Good job. What about... Wait, no. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania. That's right. What about New Jersey? Look at the camera. Trenton, New Jersey. Yeah. Trenton, New Jersey. There you go. What about Connecticut? Hartford, Connecticut. Good job. Okay. We're on to our book, Two Fun 
My fun with words. Yeah, we started the first book last year. Um, so, this one goes. Oh, George. What about Georgia? We forgot Georgia. What's Georgia? Um, Atlanta, Georgia, like the ocean. Atlantic, Atlanta. Yeah. It all. It also is by. Oh my god. Atlantic. Yeah, I'm gonna. You're right. That's oh, very, very true. I'm gonna need like 17 cups of coffee to get through today. Okay, you this week them. is a good one. We are learning about Massachusetts. Where do you think is the capital of Massachusetts? I'm gonna give you a hint. You've been there before. Um, it's where you went to visit daddy's family. Oh, but I don't know the cat. Uh, Boston. Boston. You went to Boston. You sure did go to Boston. You were in the capital. Yes. You've been to the aquarium in Boston? I didn't go there when I was with Not with just with Daddy, but with me. Where's your pencil? Go get your crayons and we'll learn about some Massachusetts. So now, um, I was a bad little mom last, the homeschooling mom last night, and I didn't get stuff ready for the day, but that's because I knew I was gonna have a little bit of time. So we can do that while I like organize everything now so um he does uh he colors this and he looks for two words in his word search a day in this while we do some sort of read alouds looks like we missed some read alouds let me go grab but what I do at the beginning of the week is I take a peek in this you asked facts and fun grades one through three book and look to see we're learning about John Quincy Adams for presidents this week and we're learning about um Obviously, you heard Massachusetts. So that's what I do is I kind of peek and see if any of these stories are relevant to either the person or the place that we're learning. And if they are, like, see, this one has Alaska lights. Obviously, we're not learning about that. But um, if they have anything to do with what we're learning about, we'll do that. And if not, then we save it for a different day. We'll do Alexander Graham Bell. Then the last thing I need to do is go out on the front porch and check and see if we have any books that are specifically on Massachusetts, but I'll do that later. And then I'll find our Massachusetts Trailblazer, W.E.B. Dubois. The Man and the Moon, our poem. Want to go get your crayons, babe? Oh, They're yeah. in the living room. I totally forgot that we were coming. Yep. What's are in the bathroom? You were singing away in there. <laughs> Once you go to the bathroom and your mom is still filming, it feels like silly. It's not filming anymore. <laughs> All right. Is this where I could put my crown yeah. for today? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so Massachusetts. Let's look at Massachusetts. By the sword we seek peace, but peace only under liberty. So it means they'll fight for peace and freedom but only if their life can be fair. Does that make sense to you? Mm. They won't fight for a life that's not going to be free. We're not gonna have liberty, right? Yeah. We'll only fight for if we have liberty in that life. Very good. That's so let's right. figure out here, what is the state mammal? What does it say? Right whale. Good job. State bird. Black cape. Capped. Caps. Chickadee. Chickadee. Very good. Chickadee. Where's our capital? Find the star. Boop. And what is the capital name? Boston. 
All right, what's the state flower? Mayflower. Oh, cool. And what is the name? The or, Bay State. Good job. So there it is. State capital, if you abbreviate it, if you see a capital M and a capital A, that means Massachusetts. Some major, major cities are Boston, Worcester, and Springfield. Also, Plymouth, Massachusetts is where Plymouth Rock. Yeah, you, do you remember? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Do you remember the story about Plymouth Rock? Yeah. When the pilgrims came over and they saw a big rock after months and months at sea. And they realized they had tiny, hit. Tiny. Yeah, now when you go, the Plymouth Rock is not big anymore. It's tiny. Yeah, I told you that story. All right, what's the population? Six. That's a point. Yeah. So 6.893 million. Yeah. So 6,000. Nope. That means 6 million and then 893,000. So that just put 6.893 million. Okay. Connecticut. Bordering state? Bordering. So that means the states that go on the outsides of it. Connecticut. Rhode Island. Rhode Island, yep. Yeah. New Hampshire, Vermont, Vermont, and New York. We live in New York. Yeah. Region of country. New England. All right. So you're going to color this while I read you some things about John Quincy Adams and also we'll see how what else we can get to during that time um and then you have to find your two words but I don't talk for that all right what do you already know a fact about John Quincy Adams what's that who is his he dad was the second president John Adams. the second president John Adams was the father of John Quincy Adams the sixth President. So John Quincy Adams was president from 1825 to 1829. You can color, honey. Wait, wasn't John Adams already president? It says he was, but this was John Adams' son, John Quincy Adams. John Quincy was the first president to be the son of another president. Young John had an exciting childhood. When he was eight, he watched the Battle of Bunker Hill the first real fighting of the Revolutionary War. So he didn't help at all? Well, he was a kid. He was only eight. Then why you, did he only watch it? Because he could see it. Do you remember what the Revolutionary War was? The Rev it's when they fought um, from England. Yes. And so we didn't have a lot of colonies then or states, right? Yeah. So our country looked what we thought it looked pretty small at the time. Oh, there's some laundry. We thought our country looked really small at the time, but really it was big. We just didn't know that. Um, and so all of the fighting happened really close by people's houses. Could you imagine looking out our door and see people fighting in the street? That's what it was like for some of it during the Revolutionary War and the Civil War. You said in one place there's still many fight wars, so don't go there. Which yeah. one was that? Well, there's a lot of wars, a lot of different places, a lot of people unrest and fighting. So our country is never, nobody's country is perfect. Everybody's country so we, always has issues, but we're pretty lucky to live where we live, huh? So we might actually have another war in New York right here. Well, we can only hope that won't happen, right? Yeah. All right. So, yeah. If, he if got... it does, I'll be a part of it. That's sweet, buddy. No, literally, I've always wanted to be in a oh, I would be nervous for you, but that's a brave thing to want to do. So, can you imagine eight years old and he's seeing all this fighting outside of his house? Then, after that, he worked with his father in Europe. But John Quincy always knew he wanted to be president one day. With, like his father. Just like his dad. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right. So that's um, all we do for the president every day so it doesn't get overwhelming. And then we can spread it out throughout the week and learn different facts about John Quincy. The next is President Pence. What was the picture we saw? I gave you a sneak peek of this one because it was super funny. It was a crocodile in a bathtub. John Adams had a 
an alligator. Alligator. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs dropped a crown. Do you remember the story of George Washington, how he got dogs sent to him? Yeah, but then left them on the dock. His friend John. Because they were being bad. Which is John Quincy. John Quincy, this is the one who what? left the dogs on the dock. This president. So let's, this poem goes. The, the way this is set up is there's a poem, then there's some presidential stats, some facts, and more presidential accomplishments. So, so for doing, right now, we just do the poem, and then we spread the rest out. For, like, the whole week. Yeah. The very same Frenchman who sent Washington hounds gave John Quincy Adams a pet for the grounds. It arrived at the house one fine summer day. It wasn't a dog or a cat or blue jay. When John opened the box that arrived via freighter, he was startled to find a pet alligator not sure where to keep it not sure what to do he found it a home in a white house bathroom when friends came to visit john let them explore imagine their fright when they opened that door oh <laughs> can you imagine going over to somebody's house and saying oh can i use your bathroom really quick and they say yeah and then you, and then you open it up and look at he's licking his lips at you <laughs> look at that poor rubber duck he's even scared he was washing himself with a loofah, too. At least he's clean, huh? What's a loofah? Oh, it's that little scrubber brush thing. All right, Parker, would you rather do How to Make a Better World, or would you rather do the Be On Your Thumb? Be On Your Thumb is always the best. All right, this is our new poem for the week, Be On Your Thumb. Thumba. Thumba. This week's is called The Man in the Moon. Oh, oh, says ooh. So, it's, so that's what it's talking about. Oh, oh. Moon, so moon, yeah. The man, make sure you're still coloring too. The man in the moon dropped into our school just yesterday morning round about noon. You may not believe me, but I have the proof. There's a man in the moon shaped hole in the roof. Oh. <laughs> Silly. And here on the blackboard, we can see of this um, little teacher's classroom. First of all, this girl is uh, playing a bassoon over here, so we can tell her to knock that off. And O and O are going, ooh. But here we have um, different things that we can see in our picture. A poodle. Do you see the poodle? Poodle's right at the back. What about an igloo? Igloo. Oh. Broom. Boop, boop, boop. What about a balloon? Right there. What about a baboon? It's kind of monkey. Baboon. That one. This one, yeah. What about a spoon? One more time. Spoon. Oh. What about, I already gave this one away, a bassoon. Yeah. That's the instrument she's playing, huh? What about boots? Boots. Boots. What about a uh, moon? Oh, I see it. I was like, where is it? That's a cow. Moose. Way up there, yeah. And a hole in the roof. Where you saw him. All right, so O, -O says what? Ooh. Ooh. Like. Moo. Correct. Yeah, good job. Food. Good food. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I'm let's. Hungry. You just ate. How about how to make the world a better place? We're talking about celebrating heritage. Heritage is something that's passed down through generations in families and communities. People share and celebrate their heritage through old tradition and shared memories. So how do you think you can make a better world by celebrating heritage? I don't know. Think about it. If heritage is like our stories and things that are passed down from year to year 
through all of the, the generations, how do you think that you could make a better world by celebrating those? Inspire how for other people to make that? Yeah, that's a great, great answer. Inspiring other people to do, to pass on our traditions. And isn't it cool to learn about others' traditions as well? Yeah. Right? Like, how cool is it to hear what somebody else's family and culture finds important? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's really important to learn about each other because then if you can understand somebody's heritage and where they come from and their beliefs and things like that, then maybe you can help understand them better. And maybe sometimes we don't think the same as other people. So understanding why they think the way that they do or why they do the things that they do can help us be more understanding and accepting of them, right? That's what you guys can do. Yeah, this uh, this book is great. I, I've talked about this before. I got this at Five Below, it was $5. It's a DK book, we love DK publishers. This is incredible. So we just take um, a topic in here and it kind of challenges us. We've made uh, mood boards for ourselves, Last uh, week, we learned how to be a great friend. We learned about community. We learned about mental health, how you can't take care of other people until you learn how to take care of yourself and make sure that you're happy and healthy. Um, so this, it's really great, and it leads to, as you can see, really great discussions. But I have a bad feeling we're not filming. So let me just take a peek. Oh, we're filming. Yeah, buddy. Um, also, you guys should make a video about one thing you do for a tradition for your family and maybe you will do that too. That would be a great idea for a video, Parker. Absolutely. How about you leave us, or if you don't want to make a video, you can always comment below um, any special traditions you have regarding anything. It can be on and holiday. If, and if you don't want to do that, then you can just not do that. Since it's since we suggested it, you don't need to say yes or no. Very good. We we learn a lot about consent in um in our household. So yeah, that's right. They can control if they say yes or no. I'm gonna read a little bit about our trailblazer while you finish up that coloring. Okay. And it's today. This week's um, trailblazer is W. E. B. Dubois. When W.E.B. Dubois was born in 1868, it was a time when the U.S. had recently fought a civil war over the question of <laughs> slavery. Uh, so he's an author and a civil rights activist. And they still have some slaves. Some people. No. Really? Really. Okay. His full name was William Edward Burghardt Dubois. Um, he was born in 1868 and he died in 1963. Why is he a trailblazer? Well, because he worked, his work transformed the way black citizens were seen in American society. Dubois grew up in Great Barrington, Massachusetts and said he was first expo exposed to racism. Do you remember what racism means? Yeah. It means when people are mean or judge or are prejudiced or um, think people are not as good as them or don't give them the same rights just because of the color of their skin. Mm. Well, they're a race, right? Yeah. I'm going to draw this tree in the leaf. I know it will yeah, okay. When he left home to go travel in the American South, when he returned to Massachusetts, he attended Harvard University, where he received multiple advanced degrees. In 1910, he went on to found the NAACP, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, while writing and teaching. And he, he what, two of his quotes are, the problem of the 20th, if the blah, 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 blah. The problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line. And to be a poor man is hard, but to be a poor race in a land of dollars is the very bottom of hardships. So what do you think that that means? That even if you're poor, um, something else can be worse? Yes, absolutely. Because people were 
so prejudiced against uh, black people in our country that they that even if a white person was poor, it, it still wasn't on the same level. They weren't treated as badly as somebody who was black and had, or and was also poor, right? So people viewed the poor black people as the very bottom of the barrel, and that's. But then the white poor, they're still treated badly, but. But just not as bad, because they don't also have the added layer of. So they're treated badly because they don't have money, but they aren't judged by the color of their skin. So even the poorest of the poor white people were not treated as badly as the black people because they still were allowed to drink out of the drinking fountains. They could vote. They could do all sorts of things. They weren't being held as slaves. <clears throat> but then way back then, they couldn't do anything. Right. And even still, it's not completely equal, huh? Yeah. One day I'm going to be trying to that. That would be an amazing goal. We'll talk more on that tomorrow because now we'll work, if you're still coloring? Yes. yes. Okay, we'll go on to my fun with words, L through Z. L through Z. So we're going to do a page of this and I just give him the word and he has to give me the definition. What about a ladder? A ladder is something high that helps you get way high up things that you can't reach. Right, a ladder is a thing that helps you get up there so you can get the peaches off the tree. The pieces that go across on a ladder are called rungs. If you would rather eat radishes, you won't need a ladder. Radishes grow underground. What about ladybug? A ladybug? is a very tiny thing that has black and red on its back. Not, and it's black on its belly. Yes, sorry to interrupt you. Not all ladybugs are ladybugs. Some of them are gentleman bugs. Ladybugs is a name we give to a kind of small beetle with round spots on its back. Ladybugs are helpful. They eat other bugs that harm farmers' crops. What about a lake? A lake is like a river, just like kind of a pond and a river together. Yeah. yeah, do you know the difference between a lake and a river? Um, a lake is bigger and it's kind of like an ocean. It has land all around it. Yes. It would be hard to water ski in your bathtub, but you could water ski on a lake. A lake is a largest body of water that has land all around it. A lake is larger than a pond. Some lakes are so big, they look like oceans. What about lamb? Did oh. you know that lamb has a silent B at the end of it? Lamb. But you don't say the B. Oh, it's like the B on your thumb. You don't say thumb. thumb. Unless you have a stuffy nose. Thumb. So you say lamb. What's a lamb? A lamb is um, kind of like a sheep, just like skinnier. A baby. No it's lamb has ever been known to attack a wolf or anything else. A lamb is a young sheep. Everybody knows that lambs are gentle and friendly. When somebody says, Mr. Jones is a lamb, that does not mean Mr. Jones has four feet and a short tail. It means a person thinks Mr. Jones is gentle and friendly. What about land? Land is um, kind of like an island, but no water surrounded by it. Land is stuff you can walk on. Maybe it's dirt or rock or sand. But if you can walk on it, it's land. This is my land, says your father. Maybe he means the piece of ground he owns or the country you live in. Land is very different from water. What about lap? Lap is like a person's knee with someone else. What happens when you stand up? <gasps> your lap goes away. Oh, that's funny. I didn't even read that. When your mother stands up, her lap disappears. When your father is sitting down, he makes a lap you can sit on. The lap is sort of like a chair. When you sit down, you make a lap that can hold a puppy or a baby brother. You don't have one of those. You have, I have baby sisters. I have two baby sisters. 
One is eight months old, the other is two and a half. And that's years. enough. And Nickelodeon said that um, Nick, it can inspire kids from two to six. Oh, poor Eloise can't be inspired. And you're almost out. <gasps> You're but, almost seven. It's going to stop inspiring you soon. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really use anything from Nickelodeon. No, that's okay. All right, how about we skip coloring these for today because we've already finished all of that reading. Wait, I need to finish this guy. Very quickly. And, and stars. Very quickly, and then you can move on to that, okay? Uh, I'm going to Because we still have whole things to do. My friend. My friend. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think you could tell me jokes while I do this? No, I'm not funny. Yes, you are. Okay. I don't know any jokes. Yes, we do. We have to read some more of our book later. What about this one? Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cat. Interrupting no. cat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> coffee's gone. That was a depressing two seconds. You interrupted me with your cow and my coffee's gone. Where's she, Eva? <laughs> <laughs> See, you can be funny. Oh, thank you. I just told you. I just showed you that you can be funny. Alright, let's find oh, words. Oh, stuff in here. Would I you didn't look at that? Would you look at that? Would you look at that? You have pencils all over this house, shit, cuckoo head. I'm gonna go get some scissors, see if we're still filming. Yeah, we are. We're good. <laughs> We've been filming this whole time! And it's been 24 hours already! Do your work, sir. <laughs> Alright, let's. I'm gonna work on some Halloween costumes, I think. Oh, uh, you can show how to do that while I do school. Sure. That's what you can do. It is much later now. It's almost three o'clock. Um, we took a little break from school and crafting Halloween costumes there's Park um, to babysit our little friend, Carmela. Um, I'm still doing spelling for you guys. Yeah, so he's still doing... No, you're doing writing, aren't you? That's writing. Writing. Yeah, so he's only made a little progress in school, but that's okay. We're going to get it done. I'm going to get back to this. Our house is a mess, of course. This is her Emery, my beautiful little girl. I'm going to get back. I have a lollipop, guys. Oh, a lolly. Yeah, we had lollipops as a little snack. And I'm going to get back to crafting. I finished Will's um, gold. I still have to add the maroon. And I was in the middle of Parker's when... Oh, I'm not even showing you this. I finished Will's gold. No, Emmy, no thank you. Go with Daddy, okay? Um, and so I have to finish Parker's gold, my gold, and Emery's silver. Like that. <clears throat> and then I have to do the other embellishing colors, the maroon. Uh, yeah, we had raspberry. She and Dad had orange. All right, Ellie so we're gonna. Had a lot of too. Yeah, Ellie had to look mine. We're gonna get back to what we're doing, and and, and <laughs> we will see you guys, guys later. Bye. Bye. Hi, baby. What are you doing? Mm. You need some milky? She's milky. This is what she does a little sign when she's hungry. Are you hungry, Ellie Belly? Want some milky? You found daddy. Do you need some milky? Do you milky? Oh, I won't tease you. I love you.
could be wrapped around your arms instead of being lonely. We could be gazing at the stars, but now it feels just like I wandered off into a room and closed the door behind me. I never gave the key to you, even though I wanted to. I should be trying something new, but now my body's aching. I'm tired of dwelling in the dark, it's just that my heart can't take it. I didn't know what it would cost me when I let you go. I feel alone, and I'm just singing, mm, mm, mm. it should have been you. Another time, another place, I just know. So if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little glimpse into our day and what more of an in-depth lesson with Parker looks like. Obviously, I didn't cover all of our core subjects, but that is in the works for the future to show you some of what we do with that. Um, but I didn't really, I noticed when I was editing, I didn't really end out this vlog and that is because I do continue this evening in a separate video that will be up tomorrow. And in that video, you'll get to see my friend Sunny and I go to the Dollar Tree and experience maybe the creepiest Dollar Tree experience ever. So fitting for our Halloween crafting video that we want to share with you tomorrow. So make sure that you are subscribed to our channel. It is Scarathon still, and we are sharing a video every single day up until Halloween. And um, after you've made sure you're subscribed to our channel, head over to Carolyn's channel, which will be will, which will be linked in the description box below. She is also participating in Scarathon with me, um, and her videos have been absolutely great. She's got a great mix of decor and vlogging on her channel so you might want to make sure that you're subscribed to her as well and uh, make sure you follow both of us on instagram so you're always up to date on everything that we are doing so with that being said thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it um especially in these lengthier videos it's really nice to know that um you are appreciating the content that we're sharing and we are absolutely loving to do that for you and connecting with all of you in the comments. So thank you so much for your continued support and we can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bye.